I do have a joke. I'm going to turn this on so I don't forget. Make sure it's working. Uh, we all like food, right? Yeah. I do too. I'd say, I mean, I got a lot of favorite foods, but I would have to say <coughs> pizza and fried chicken, pretty close. So I thought this joke was kind of cute. I did share this on, on a Thursday. So you, some of you Thursday people, not last Thursday, but a couple Thursdays ago. So this will be a repeat for you. It's called My Favorite Animal. You know, and you know, your parents always tell you to be honest, right? Is that right? But sometimes when you're honest, people don't want you to be honest. How many of you know what I'm talking about? This is uh, from Greg Moore. He's one of the Karis Bible College instructors. And he always shares a joke, and I do my best to take every one. Uh, if they make me laugh, hopefully they'll make you laugh. My favorite animal. My teacher asked what my favorite animal was, and I said fried chicken. She said that wasn't funny, but she couldn't have been right because everyone else laughed. <laughs> My parents uh, told me to always tell the truth, and I did. Fried chicken is my favorite animal. I told my dad what happened, and he said, my teacher was probably a member of PETA. He said, they, have, they love animals very much. I do too, especially chicken, <laughs> pork, and beef. <clears throat> anyway, my teacher sent me to the principal's office, and I told him what happened, and he laughed, he laughed also. He told me not to do it again. The next day in class, my teacher asked me what my favorite live animal was. I told her it was chicken. She, she asked why, and I told her it was because you could make it into fried chicken. <laughs> she sent me back to the principal's office, and he laughed and told me not to do it again. I don't understand. My parents taught me to be honest but my teacher doesn't like it when I am. Today, my teacher asked us what, to tell her what famous person that I admired the most. I told her, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Guess where I am now. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. All right. So some people don't always like it when you... Yeah, you know, I, I can relate. I mean, I think that guy's right on. You know, Colonel Sanders was born again. Did you know that? Before he died? Anybody know the story of Colonel Sanders? That's why you go into Kentucky Fried Chicken and you see on their receipt, you always see, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, he got born again. Mm -hmm. He was praying, uh, uh, or this church was praying uh, in uh, Kentucky. They were praying for uh, God to send a millionaire or whatever per person their way to help them financially. That's good prayer. Amen. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, one day, the colonel walks in and come up to the preacher and said, can God take my cusser out? And so God took his cusser out. Amen. And the rest is history. Well, he's now at home in heaven. So I just think that's awesome. Praise the Lord of glory. Who's ready for the word? Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. For those of you that don't know, we are a grace and faith church which means we emphasize what Jesus has done and not what you're doing or not doing. That's really big. Amen? But, but we emphasize what Jesus has done, but we also emphasize that our part is to respond to what He has done, not to uh, create what He has done, but to respond to it. I mean, that's, that's balance. Everybody know balance is not a cuss word. Amen? Some people think it is. It's not. But, but the problem is people have misconstrued uh, balance and say, well, you mix law and your effort in with what Jesus has done. No, it's just what Jesus has done. I love the equation. Jesus plus anything equals nothing. There you go. Amen. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Amen? Amen? So Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 21. This is an amazing verse. I love the way the King James says it. Uh, this is in the Old Testament. How many of you know you're under a better covenant? Amen. Based on better promises. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. A lot better. We have, wow. I mean, what they had under the old covenant doesn't even compare to what you and I have in Jesus. They had it in type and shadow. You and I have it in substance. Amen. This is, say, this is God's will right here. Do you know that? Watch it. Here it is. That your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. You know, that's God's desire. Amen. How do you know? Let's go to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. And we'll look at it there. 
This is commonly referred to as the Lord's Prayer. And what is the days of heaven on earth? Well, I want to talk about that too. But that's God's desire. God desires you and I to experience heaven on earth right now. Amen. God doesn't want you to wait till you die to experience heaven. We've talked about it before. You know what a procrastinator is, right? Someone who won't take now for an answer. <laughs> that's a procrastinator. No, this, is, this is an amazing verse, commonly referred to as the Lord's Prayer. And now, now let me say something here. This prayer right here is a transitional prayer. What do you mean by that? It's a transition from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. Amen? For example, he starts off with, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, he was really emphasizing that now God wasn't just going to be God. He was go going to be Father. You know, Jesus got in trouble because he called God his Father. Right. Amen? That was just so mind-boggling to the religious mind. Right. And it still is today. You know, God's your Father. You ever get frustrated with yourself? Uh -huh. Don't look at me. I, and we all do. <laughs> I, I sometimes, even when I'm praising the Lord, I get frustrated with me because I don't focus like I want to. Because I love the Lord. And you know what the Lord showed me? Don't worry about it. Relax. I love you. I'm going, oh, yeah, but, 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 <laughs> there's no buts. There's no, get your butt out of the way. I <laughs> mean, oh, sorry. <laughs> that was intentional. I just want you to know. <laughs> Amen. That's the problem. God's saying, just relax. Just whenever you give me any attention, I just love you. Let him love on you. He just wants to love on you. Uh, but, but my point in saying all that is just introducing to religious folks that now God was, go was going to be Father through the new birth that was available. But then he goes on and says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There he is. This is God's desire for heaven on earth. Now, some people say, well, the kingdom's going to come. No, the kingdom has come. And I'm going to get into some stuff today. Now, I agree we are not in our glorified bodies. I agree Jesus hasn't physically returned. But I want you to know, Jesus is here right now. If you're born again, He's in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we need to focus on that. God's not somewhere out there. Uh, what well, you know, I used to have this mindset, and I know Denny will tell you the same thing, because we all had this mindset. We just got to get God's presence here. God's presence is already here. Right now. You know, I, I, I will agree that there's times when I'm more sensitive to it than at other times. That's different. But God's presence is here. God's presence is wherever I go. I don't have to work up a mood. I don't have to get some kind of, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Okay, is he coming yet? Jesus, 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 Jesus. There he is. You know, actually, I just got dizzy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Amen? But see, that's the new covenant. What the new covenant growth is, for it, once you're born again, new covenant growth is, is learning what you already have in the Spirit. Now, notice I said in the Spirit. That was intentional too. But God doesn't want it to stay in the Spirit. Are you hearing me? God wants it to come from the Spirit, where, where it's at, into your soulish realm, your mind, your will, and your emotions, and then out into the physical. So I believe that God is still saying, or still his desire is that the kingdom would come through us. That's it. That's it. And now that word come, I dealt with this word last week. The New Testament was written in what? Greek. Redneck? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what a redneck is, right? If you've ever mentioned body odor in a eulogy, you might be wrong. <laughs> I read that somewhere. But you know, God still desires the kingdom to come from who we are in the spirit and to manifest in our emotions and to manifest into our physical situation. That's right. That word come there, we dealt with it last week. It's a Greek word, erchomai. And it means to gain a place of influence. Mm, it means to be established. It means to arise. It. it means to come from one place to another. You know, God wants... The kingdom that's in us, I'm going to show you this, in our born-again spirit, he wants it to manifest in our emotions, our reasoning faculties, and into our physical walk. Amen. 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 That's still God's desire. 
And this past week, though, I felt the Lord spoke something to me. Now, I have to tell you this. When I was jogging, the only reason I say that is because I hardly ever jog. And so I'm trying to create this illusion that I'm some kind of big runner. <laughs> I hardly ever do, but every now and then I get the urge. And sometimes I just get up. You know, you can't sleep. You're up super early. It's dark. No one else is out. And when I was doing this uh, jog, I heard the Lord say, most, if not all, the misunderstandings in the body of Christ have their root system in the fact that people don't understand the trifold man, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. All right. All right. Amen? Amen? In your spirit, you are already complete. Yes. Did you know that? It, I'm talking to born-again people. Now, if you're not born again, this doesn't apply to you. But the good news is it can. You can be born again today. That's good news. But if you're born again, the Bible says, First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Watch this. I'm going to give you some scriptures. Look at this. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one body. Spirit. Amen. Numa. You know what that means? He's joined unto the Lord. He's one with the Lord in spirit. Right? <clears throat> See, I'm going to show you some examples of how, because people don't understand this, we get confused. Confusion is not from God. He's not the author of confusion. Jump over to very familiar verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at this. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That word sanctify means set you apart. You know, if you're born again, you're already set apart in your spirit. Amen. Did you know that? Right. We just read it. He that is joined in the Lord is one spirit. Not going to be one spirit, but already one spirit. One third of your salvation is complete. It's done. You are the same in spirit as you will be for 10 billion years. That'll never change. But how many you know there's a lot of parts of us that need to change, like the way we think, how we feel? You know, how, you know why people many times, they get depressed because they're focused on the wrong thing. I deal with this. You know, something comes at you and it tries to get you to go with it. Amen? Amen. And you know, and like, like, like it's been said, and I love this, sometimes Satan puts a little splinter in our path and by the time we're done focusing on it, it's a ball bat and he's beating our brains out with it. <laughs> Amen? Rather than focusing on what God says, this is why you got to counter it. When Jesus was tempted, he didn't say, well, I'm not hungry. I mean, the dude hadn't ate for 40 days. He was hungry. But he said, it is written. He countered it with the Word of God. And it's important that you and I do the same thing. Look at your neighbor and say, open your mouth. <laughs> you know, we do it when we're, 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 we're going to complain. Death, Satan's after your mouth. Did you know that? He's after your belief system, obviously. But if, he, but, if, but if my focus is wrong, he'll get my mouth and he'll release authority in what he wants to do. Amen. Your words are important. That's why it's so important to praise the Lord. That's why David, an old covenant man, was a man after God's own heart. Can I show you something? Is that okay? I will anyhow. Okay. Okay. How many, I'm going to show you who's been in this negative situation before. I want to show it to you. 1 Samuel 30, verse 4. We'll start there. Watch this. 1 Samuel chapter... I'm going in a whole different direction, so I believe this is the Lord. Amen? In the Spirit, you have joy. You have peace. You have all these things. Now watch this. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 4. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no power to weep. Anybody ever been there? Okay. Well, you just weep and man, you just have no more ability to weep. Now let's see what they were going through. Next verse. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. Next verse. Watch this. And David was greatly distressed. It, man, wonder why. For the people spake of stoning him. Now, is there anybody in here that people are talking about physically stoning you? If there is, come up here and we will pray for you. Would you agree with me that that's a very negative situation? I think so. Now watch this. And because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. 
This is an old covenant guy who did not have a born-again spirit that you and I have. He didn't have all this access. And the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. That's awesome to me. And you know, I, I, do you realize that David at this point had been waiting, he had been promised to become king for 13 years and that he was only 24 to 48 hours from the realization of that dream? What if David would have quit right here and said, man, what's the use? All right, all right. What's the use? Let me show you another quick, well, I won't go there. But go, I'll go to Psalm 34. I'm just, this is just quick, these, these bless me. You guys got a whole, bunch, whole lot more than this. In your spirit, I'm going to get to this. Hang with me. Psalm 34, verse 1. We look at these verses and we think, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, do you know, this is a Psalm of David. Do you know that when David wrote this Psalm, he was fleeing from a demented king named Saul who tried to kill David not one time, not two times, but 21 times. Would you agree that's a negative situation? Can you imagine if the President of the United States was out to kill you and you had been to the White House and you had sat there and ate and all of a sudden a javelin came boom, brrr, and you know what I'm saying? And you were running in the field and, this, and, and he was after you and all the government agencies, they were, they were rallying to get you. Now put yourself in this mindset. That's what David was in. Mm -hmm. this, I want you, this is an old covenant guy. You've got something a whole lot greater than this. Amen. Now watch this. You know what was going on when he wrote this? In, I'll give you the scripture. You can go there when you get your own. First Samuel chapter 21, there was a king named Achish or Abimelech. Abimelech's the throne name, they believe. Achish was his personal name. And this was when David was running from Saul. He had just got from Ahimelech, the priest, he had just got Goliath's sword and he was running and he faked like he was mad, like he was insane. That's when this was written. Spittle ran down on his beard and he was faking like, man, and David writes this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Next verse, watch this. My soul. My soul. See, David didn't have a born again spirit like you and I did because Jesus hadn't come yet. My soul shall make her boast in my situation, in how it looks, in the Lord. The New Testament, Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. always. And again, just in case you miss it, I say rejoice. Amen. You and I can choose, hear me, we can choose to activate this life that's in our spirit. That's right. That's right. Did you know that? Amen. We can encourage ourselves in the Lord. Amen. Amen. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. I love this. I, I could preach on this whole song. This is so good. The humble... The humble, that's the only ones that can hear this. Those that are got their focus in the Lord. Unhumble people can't hear what we're talking about here. They can hear it, but they can't hear it. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Next verse. I love this. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord where? New covenant. He's already big. And if you're a New Testament believer and you're born again, He's big in your spirit. You're complete in Christ, Colossians 2.10. You can't be any more completer. I know that's not a good word, but I kind of like it. Doesn't it, doesn't it sound like a new tractor or something? Or a new snowmobile? The 2014 completer's out. <laughs> it kind of does to me. I think I just got an idea there. <laughs> oh, Moving right along. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. Do you know this is written for us? Amen. You know that? Even though he's an old covenant man. I want you to get the picture. The government is after him. Saul's nuts. Saul's trying to kill him. This is not just an IRS audit. <laughs> you got that? This is, this is, they're trying to take this guy down. And this is what David says. David has to fake to save his life. And I, I love that. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. See, if you're back to the new covenant, your spirit's already with him. Now, back to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. No, you know what? No, 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 no. 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Let's just do a little walk here. What do you say? I'm just going to go, go. This is so good. Watch this. There it is again. <laughs> rejoice evermore. You say, but I don't have any joy to rejoice is a choice. 
Not based on circumstances. Listen, guys, I got to live this just like everybody else. But it's not a drudgery because God loves me. No matter what it looks like out here, it's a blessing. You know, why does God want us to praise him? Because he's got an ego? No, because he loves you. Why do you, want, why do you want your children, if you have children, why do you want them to love on you and be with you? You know, it hurts me sometimes. Gracie will be, you know, she, she, you know, she runs to her mama, and that's normal. I understand that. Hey, give me a hug. You hurt me when you don't, you know, of course I'm joking. She's a good girl, don't get me wrong. But my point is, you know, I want her to love on me too. Mm -hmm. that's right. Why is that because I'm just selfish slob? <laughs> it's because that's how I created me. And God, people say God doesn't want anything. God seeks, the Father seeks, John 4, 23, those to worship him. Watch this, in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? You're born again. They couldn't do this in the Old Covenant. David couldn't give God what you and I could. Can right now. Right. Did you know that? Right. You can. In spirit and in truth. Who's truth? Jesus. All that Jesus accomplished. You can give the Father what He's longed for. See, God is His spirit. Mm -hmm. And we can't... We, under the Old Covenant, they were limited. Under the New Covenant, you are unlimited. Do you hear that? Now, I understand there is the limitations of this physical body. I'm not denying that. But I'm saying in your spirit, you're unlimited. <laughs> Glory to God. See, this is, this is why Satan hates new covenant teaching. Because if, if we can chain you to how you feel. See, a lot of people think, well, God must have been here because I felt him. I use this story all the time and I love it. You know about the man who's, man, I was in this church service and I felt the presence of God and I got goosebumps and the hair on my arm stood up and, and the back of my neck. I was going to say on my head, but there, I can't do that one. <laughs> but, but I was awesome. I said, God is in this place. God is here. And then I got in the car and turned the radio on. I had that same feeling, goosebumps, or, uh, you know, hair standing up on my arms. And all of a sudden, John, it was because Johnny Cash shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. <laughs> same feelings. How many of you know those are emotions? Those are good. Thank God for emotions. But you can't live by them. You've got to live by what God says you are. And that reality is in the Spirit. That's why he says rejoice evermore. Next verse. Pray without ceasing. Constantly be in communion with God. Next verse. In everything, not for everything. Man, you've got to emphasize that. Oh, God just does all. No, he doesn't. In everything. If you're sick, you don't thank God for the sickness. You resist and rebuke the sickness in Jesus' name because by His stripes you were healed. Right. Right. But you still thank Him that He's the healer. And even if you don't receive your healing, you go home to be with the Lord, you go home to heaven, it's a win-win situation. Amen. Amen? So in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. People always looking for the will of God. It's right there it is. Amen? If we would be thankful for what we have right now, godliness with contentment isn't gain. It's great gain. Amen? Amen? You know what the word godliness means? According to Vine's Expository Dictionary, to be consistent with God. Amen? To be well devoted through what Jesus has done. Anyhow, in everything give thanks. For this is the will. You know, i got to say something. If you believe the work is finished, all, right. all that's left is... Thank you. And all the various ways of saying thank you. Oh, for a thousand tongues to glorify Him and thank Him for all that He's done. And guess what? It doesn't stay there. It gets better. you got a glorified body laid to your account. <clears throat> but you can operate right now from who you are in the Spirit. All right. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Next verse. Quench. Not the Spirit. Do you know when you're unthankful and you're a murmur and a complainer, you stop God's Spirit from doing what He wants to do? Quench not the Spirit. Is that the Holy Spirit or your born-again Spirit? It's both. Pneuma in Greek, the Holy Spirit and your Spirit are one. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Next verse. Despise not prophesying. Next verse. Prove or test all things. Hold fast to that which is good. We could camp on all these verses. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Next verse. Here we go. And the very God of peace sanctify you, set you apart holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And here's what I want you to see. Spirit is the part of you that's changed. Back to my original thought. 
Most, if not all, the misunderstandings in the body of Christ come because people don't understand spirit, soul, and body. Let me give you some examples. Are you ready? Nobody's ready. Okay. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. <laughs> Watch this. You got to get this. If you get this, this is so life-changing. You know, even those who think we understand spirit, soul, and body, we don't. How do I know? I listen to people talk. I can tell you people don't understand it. That's not a cut. That's a Listen, I love it when I find out I'm the problem. Don't you love it? I love it. You know why? Except when it's my wife, because she's, I'm never the, I'm kidding. But I love it because if God's the problem, how many know he's the Lord and he changes not? But if I'm the problem, that can change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, and that's why Satan, Satan's only fight is to get you to defeat yourself. And the only way you defeat yourself is you don't understand who you are in the Spirit. And who you are in the Spirit is who Christ is. Amen. That's why the Bible says, as He is, so are you in this world. That's why He says that. <clears throat> Where am I like He is? <clears throat> in my Spirit. In my Spirit. Amen. Amen. And he, watch this. And he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Question. Your spirit is the real you. You are a spirit. You have a soul. What is your soul? It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. And of course, your physical body is this earth suit. It's what you see. Now, let me say this to you. What part is this? Is this what, parts, what part of you is raised up and seated together with him in heavenly places? Is it your soul? Is it your body? It's your spirit. That's big. That your spirit. Now, what, and what does that mean? What does it mean that you're sitting? It means your spirit's already at rest. Your spirit's already at rest. It, it means authority. When we say so and so is seated in office, that doesn't mean he or she's sitting down all the time. At least we hope not. Right? That's a position of authority. Right? So the part of me that's raised up and seated together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus is my spirit. Now stop. Because I've heard people say, well, you're already in heaven. There's a truth there. But guess what? I happen to know you're in those seats and I can see you and I'm standing right here and this is not, this physical earth is not heaven. Your spirit's in heaven. Amen? Amen. If that wasn't so, why would Paul say this? And, and let me bring up another one. God is always with you, right? Mm -hmm. But then why did Paul in 2 Corinthians 5 and Philippians 1 have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better? Are you seeing how these things get misconstrued? Go to Philippians 1, 21. Watch this. My spirit's already one with him. That will never, that's not going to change. That's, I've been sealed, it says in Ephesians 1 and 2 Corinthians 1. Paul said, for me to live is, is Christ and to die is gain. Next verse. For if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I will not. Or I, you know, I'm in a, for I'm in a straight betwixt two, old King James, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Wait a minute, Paul. Aren't you already with Christ? He said he would never leave you nor forsake you. See, if you don't understand spirit, soul, and body, you're going to have times where you don't, you don't, well, I don't feel like I'm with Christ. I don't feel. Guess what? Your feelings are lying. Your spirit's with him. Side with your spirit and not with your feelings. There you go. There you go. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. See, Paul, you will exit this physical body, contrary to what some moon, meatheads say. Moonheads, meatheads, whatever. I'm serious. There's people saying all kinds of stuff. I just seen a Facebook post and a guy said, he said on there, you know, Christ is the head, uh, we're the body, so you are Jesus. <clears throat> I wanted to reach through there and slap the snot right out. I'm sorry. The spirit of slap came all over me. You're not Jesus. You're one spirit with him. Amen. But he, let, let me, me and my wife are one flesh. How many know I'm not her? My favorite place to be. I'll give you a ride. Yeah, I'll give you a ride. She didn't do that. Oh, honey, please. Too late. Too late. Well, at least I got a ride home. 
she can take it. She's got thick skin, right? <laughs> but, but yeah, but you know, seriously, isn't, if you don't understand those things, people are saying all kinds of stuff in the name of God. That's right. That's right. Amen? Amen? There are people out there teaching now that everybody's saved. That God's grace is so powerful that God's grace just overrides the free will of man. You know what that's called? Rape. Yeah, exactly. Whenever you force your love upon somebody, or in the case of rape, it would be lust. Whenever that's that's not God. God honors your free will. And if you don't want to accept him, he'll honor that. But my point is, is the people take truths to the exclusion of other truths and they have error. And a lot of it's rooted in the fact that people don't understand spirit, soul, and body. They don't understand that the part of me that changed was my spirit when I was born again. Let me give you another one. James chapter 4 verse 8. I think I got two more. James chapter, but that'll do. James, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Stop. We could do the rest of that verse, but that'll open a whole other can of worms. Draw nigh to God. Draw near to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Wait a minute. I thought God was in me that I was completing Christ, right? But then how do I draw nigh to God? What part of me draws nigh to God? Is this my spirit he's talking about? No. My spirit is already one with him. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, Hebrews chapter 2, all over the place it talks about that. I'm born again, but what part of me draws nigh to God? My soul, my mind, my will, my emotions. That's what draws nigh to God. And when that draws nigh to God, God is in my spirit. When I draw nigh to who I am in Christ, I'm drawing nigh to God. When I draw nigh to God, it's like that faucet that you turn on. All this life that's in my spirit, the faucet, the more you open it up, the more comes out. Amen? Isn't that good? That's what it means to draw nigh to God. But see, people don't understand these verses. People don't understand the difference between Old Covenant and New Covenant. That's why they sing songs like, Create in me a clean heart. Oh, Lord. No. God, that's David after he committed sin with Bathsheba under the Old Covenant. If you're born again, God's taken that stony heart of flesh out and put in a heart of flesh, which means a heart that's pliable. Amen. So drawing nigh to God, you can't draw any nigher <laughs> than in your spirit. You can't, but your soul can. And see, and that's the part of us that needs to focus. That's the part of us that we exercise our faith, and that's the part of us where our faith grows, 2 Thessalonians 1.3. See, we have to understand what we have in the spirit is done. But in our soul... It's not done. That's when we say, well, I need to change. Or as Emerson says, exchange. That's a better way to say it. I need, I need, the exchange is, is realizing that in the spirit, this is who I am. But if I'm constantly identifying with my feelings and never identifying with what God says about me, let me give you another one. 2 Corinthians, very familiar, chapter 5, verse 17. Watch this. Very familiar verse of scripture. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. Thank Not going to be a new creation. A new creation now. Amen. Amen. That's big. Amen. Right now. But is that in my physical body? No. no. Now, God desires it to affect my physical body. That's right. That's right. But it's not there automatically. Is that in my emotions? Not necessarily unless I start renewing my mind to who I am in the spirit by putting the word in. When you put the word in, where do you put it in? Your, your spirit or you put it in your soul? Your mind, your soul, your will, your emotions. You're opening the faucet by realizing this is who Jesus made me. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if he's born again, he is a new creature or creation. Old things have passed away. I love this word. Behold. That word behold means look. Look. Behold, all things are become new. You say, you don't understand. I'm depressed. Your focus is wrong. Your feelings are a lie. Amen. Amen. So you know what heaven on earth looks like? Yes. Heaven on earth looks like, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Heaven on earth looks like who you are in the spirit manifesting in this physical realm. Oh, <laughs> well 
That's what it looks like. It doesn't look like if what the world thinks it looks like. If that was the case, then everybody in Hollyweird would be manifesting the abundant life of God. But they can't even keep their marriages together, many of them. Why? Because they need Jesus. And it's, we're not being self-righteous and, and running them down. We just say, man, somebody loves you unconditionally. God in, was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, and he's committed unto us that word of reconciliation that can tell people, now you can be reconciled to God. Will you receive it? Amen? Amen. So, so what is this? If I'm a new creation, is that in my physical body? No. no. Is that in my soulish realm? No. Not necessarily. Until I start renewing my mind. It. It's in my spirit. That's why he says, look. That's why he says, look. You got to look at it. Where do you look at it? The mirror of God's word. And you look in the Bible not as a law book, but as a life book. It's not about a bunch of rules you keep. It's about the very life of Christ keeping you. See, if you look at the Bible and you don't see Jesus, and this, this is what Jesus has done, then you'll see all the things that you got to do. Guess what? He did them all for you. And the more you realize that, the more that life manifests. Now, jump over to uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. I'll show you another one. Two more. We're just about done. Ooh, I've got to hurry. Wherefore, I love, I love quoting this verse as I get a run into this. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, notice what he says. Don't be unwise. That's, that's good. <laughs> because we can be unwise. And you're unwise when you don't understand what the will of the Lord is. If you think sickness is God teaching you something, you're unwise. Because that's not the will of the Lord. Amen. Oh, I got some things to say. Moving right along. Next verse. And be not drunk with wine... Wherein is excess. The word excess literally means unsavedness. But be filled with the soul. But be filled with the body. Be filled with the spirit. Now stop. Where, what part of me gets filled with the spirit? What part of me gets filled with the spirit? Think about it. My spirit's already full. My, it's not filling my spirit with the spirit. It's already full with the Spirit. It's filling my soul with the Spirit. Moving right along. He tells you, next verse. Speaking. Opening your mouth. Speaking. All the things that are, and the pains you have in your body. How they treated you when you was four years old. Speaking. Speaking. To yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I believe the psalms are the psalms, 150 psalms. I believe that. I believe the hymns are things you make up in your native tongue. And I believe the spiritual songs are the Holy Ghost language where you can sing in the Holy Ghost. That's what I believe. If you don't believe it, that's okay. I'm not going to agree with you. We'd both be wrong. Just kidding. <laughs> you may be right, but that's what, I, that's what I believe. But speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. See, this is how you fill your soul with who you are in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. You need to fill your soul with who you are in the Spirit. Do you know if your vehicle runs low on fuel, guess what happens after a while? Runs out. But if you will allow your soul to be filled, not with what the world's saying. That's like these people get up in the morning and, you know, they listen to four hours of news before they go to work. I mean, come on, guys. I wonder why I'm depressed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't committed sideways. <laughs> I mean, because it's depressing. All this, that bad, and this person shot, and this person killed, and the, the Democrats are fighting the Republicans, and everybody's fighting this, and nobody can get along. And man, oh man, it's all just about over. I'm serious. It's not just... We win, baby. There's more people getting saved now than ever before. Muslim people in other countries are having visions of Jesus. Guess what? We're winning. And we're not only winning, we already won, and we're going to manifest that victory. You know, that, praise God. This, you know, I get so tired of this stuff 
where you know that, that this, this remnant mentality that there's only just a handful of us going to make it and we're going to be hiding in a bomb shelter somewhere eating spam and, and sitting around talking about man we're, we're hiding and, and, and they, just got, they got Joe and they cut, cut his head off I mean get out of here get out of here we win see a lot of that's the negative confessions of the church because we believe all this junk it's junk and if some of these guys would be honest with Scripture, it doesn't hold a match. We win. We won. Declare the victory. Go tell people God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And you can be reconciled too. Be reconciled because of what Jesus has done. God loves our political leaders. They need Jesus. Amen. We get a new Antichrist every time we get a new president. I always go back to Ronald Wilson Reagan. Six, six, six. Foolish, foolish, foolish. Nothing to do with the Antichrist. The Antichrist stands in pulpits every Sunday. He's pro-God, but he's Antichrist. So he points you away from what Jesus did, and he turns the body of Christ, the only hope for the world is Jesus through his body. He turns you back to your performance. That's what the Antichrist is. And John said, even now there's many Antichrist. He's not a political leader. It's a religious spirit that operates in pulpits in the body of Christ. That's it. Amen. 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 Notice it's Antichrist, not anti-Buddha. The spirit of anti-Buddha. Notice it's not anti-God. Because it's pro-God. Wow, i got to hurry. <laughs> All right. In the spirit. Um, be filled with the spirit. So the part of you that's filled with the Spirit is your soulish realm. And then it manifests in your situation. Let me give you this one. Oh, boy. One more. I'll do one more quick one, and then I'm going to stop. Galatians chapter 6. This is a really good one. Wow. I'm looking at all this good stuff. Galatians chapter 6. Let's go verse 7. Watch this. This is so good. This is so good. So good. I'm so excited. Be not deceived. Now stop. Is he talking to unbelievers or Christians? Christians. Christians. He, believers, the body of Christ. So he's telling me and you to not be deceived. Why? Because we can be deceived. Hallelujah. I don't like that fact, but it's reality. God loves you enough to tell you. And then he goes on. Next, uh, leave it right here. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, here's how we've interpreted that. Well, I'll tell you what. You sow your wild oats, and, and there are consequences. If, you do, if, you, if a person's promiscuous and out there like that, if they get a sexually transmitted disease, that's because they're the consequences of those wrong actions. That, I totally agree with that. That's not what these verses are talking about. That's not what they're talking about at all. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Next verse. Watch this. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Now we think that's doing bad things. Thank you, Jen. It's not. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now watch this. What is sowing to the flesh? Good question. Next verse. Go, go. No, no, don't go to the next verse. Keep this here and we'll come back. Jump over to Galatians 3.3. 3. Look at this. Here's sowing to the flesh. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? Sowing to the flesh is, sowing, is trying to do your relationship with God in your own strength. That's why in Galatians 5 it talks about the works of the flesh. The more you try... In your own strength, the more you come short, you may not do it in physical action, but Jesus said to look upon a woman to lust. You've already committed adultery in your heart because you can't do it. Are you hearing this? So when you sow and you're hearing messages that are putting in you that, man, you just need to try harder. You just need to do this more. You need to be more. You know. Religion, I love what Pastor Reza says. Religion is that system that teaches you to labor for that which is already yours. That's the very essence of man's religion. And that's in sowing to the flesh. He says, if you sow to the flesh. Now, let me leave this up here. 
But he says, if you sow to the flesh, it's of the flesh you'll reap corruption. Not from God. Not from God. Not from God. <laughs> you know what you reap from God? What Jesus deserves. I'm getting what Jesus deserves. Amen. I love, are you so foolish? He's telling me, is this the same book? Different chapter, same letter. He says this, are you so foolish, you Galatian Christians? You started out in the Spirit trusting Jesus and what He has done. Are you so foolish that you now can uh, attain your goal through human effort? The NIV says it that way. Human effort's called flesh. Human effort, that's what He's talking about in this context. The whole book. Now back to Galatians 6. Verse 7, or verse 8. We'll just do verse 8. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. For he that sows to the flesh, human effort, shall of the flesh, not God, shall of the flesh, not God, reap corruption. The Greek picture of that, according to the linguistic key to the Greek New Testament, is a stinking, rotting field of whatever vegetation, like say tomatoes or whatever, that's just stench and rotten. Who would want that? Amen? See, that's what trusting in yourself produces. That's why Christians burn out. Because they don't know who they are in the Spirit. You know, right now, you may have went through something. I'm not trying to be insensitive to what you went through. But God is rejoicing on the inside of me. And when something comes at me from the outside, I got to go somewhere. And I got to let, I got to focus and program on who I am in the Spirit. Or it'll take me down. It'll take me down. It'll take you down too. And I'll, amen. It'll take you down because you're identifying with flesh and not identifying with who you are in the spirit. And see, and your soul just goes, your body just goes with whatever way you're identifying with. Okay. For he that sows to the flesh, human effort shall of the flesh reap corruption. I love this. But he that sows to the spirit, he keeps hearing about the new covenant. He keeps hearing about who he is in Christ. He keeps hearing that he's completing Christ. He keeps hearing that God's pleased with him. He keeps hearing all those good things. Watch this. Shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. That's why it's called the fruit of the spirit, not the fruit of the flesh. What is heaven on earth? It's the fruit of the Spirit in manifestation. <laughs> Amen. 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 That's why he said, Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment. Why is it new? Was it not a reality in the old covenant? Because now you can do it. Hallelujah. Because it's who you are. Thank that you love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men, all men out there, know that you're my disciples by your love one for another. But you've all seen it too. People, <laughs> they looked at me wrong. <laughs> Welcome to life. Welcome to life. My wife looks at me wrong all the time. Just kidding. Who's with those rights? I'm just kidding. <laughs> For he that sows to the flesh shall the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. That's not talking about in the sweet by and by. If you're born again, you're going to heaven. Amen. That's talking about reaping it in this life. Right now. Right now. Next verse. I love the next verse. Huh. And let us not be weary in well-doing. What's the well-doing he's talking about? Sowing to the Spirit. Keep hearing about who you are in Christ. Don't get weary in that. Watch this. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. How do you faint? You start looking at who you are in the flesh and not who you are in the spirit. You get weary. Oh, I've been at this so long. The biggest thing that excites me is that my excitement is from the Word of God. Amen. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God. You, know, you know what quitting is? I, you say, well, they never quit. You know, some people keep doing the same thing, but they quit in their heart. And they're still going through the motions. But the Holy Ghost, if you continue to sow to the Spirit, if you continue to see who you are in Christ and allow that life to permeate your being, guess what? In due season, you're going to reap everything that God has made available to you. Both here and hereafter. It's so big, this life can't even contain it. You can, this life can't contain it. Oh, one more. 
That's where, see, a scripture used to bug, 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 bug me. In 1 Corinthians 15, 19, just go there. It's earlier than it's ever been. It's just too good. How do you stop? You don't. You just quit. <laughs> Watch this. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. And if in this life only we have hope in Christ, this bugged me for so long till I started looking at it. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. You know what he's saying here? You know that word life? It's not bios, where we get biology. It's not that word. It's not suke, the word for soul that's sometimes used for the word life. It's not that word either. It's zoe, the God kind of life. This whole chapter is talking about your, the resurrection of our bodies. He's saying, if in this life only, this limited life here, if, we, if our hope with this Zoe life of God, the very life of God, if it only can manifest here, we're of all men most miserable because this life is so much bigger than this world can contain. Amen. I don't know if you got that, but it blessed me. <laughs> That's powerful. That's powerful. He's talking about the resurrection of your physical body. What you have on the inside is so great that this physical body can't even handle all the goodness of God. So you're going to have to have a glorified body to be able to take it. But he wants you to start it now. You got to see, man, who, this is who I am. Everything the Bible says about Jesus, he's made me worthy. Not because I deserved it, but he deserved it for me. And I'm reaping what Jesus, all that Jesus deserves because he took all the bad and the, the curse and the judgment that I deserve. He took it even when I'm not perfect. Even when I'm praising him, I feel like I'm a little scatterbrained and I'm not as intense as I should be. I feel that stuff. Liar, liar, flesh on fire. Amen. I'm not identifying with the flesh. I'm identifying with who I am in the spirit. I've had situations come and you feel jealousy. All of a sudden I recognize that ain't who I am. This is who I am. I've got love, I've got joy, I've got peace, I've got long-suffering, I've got gentleness, I've got goodness, I've got faithfulness, I've got meekness, and I've got self-control against those there does not need to be an external law because of who I am in Christ. <laughs> Glory to God, and I don't know how to quit, so I'm just stopping. It's so good. You're so blessed. I mean, you are blessed, blessed. That's a 110% reality in your spirit right now.